Hi everyone, my name is Diana and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before I start today's video, I just wanted to thank everyone who watched and supported me during my first video and you guys were honestly so sweet about it and so supportive and it literally made my whole week. I've been looking forward to filming um, this video because you guys were so sweet about the last one and I seriously can't wait to keep posting on this channel. Um, so thank you guys so much for all your support and your kind words and just showing support. I know it wasn't a perfect video and everything so I just I really appreciate all the kindness you guys showed me for my first video. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing my top 23 books of 2023. They're all behind me and I, I had a great reading year last year. I read 106 books so it was definitely a struggle to pick the top 23 out of all those because I did read some amazing books but I think out of all those these are the ones that really stood out for me and I'm really excited to share them with you. So I'm thinking about starting with 23 and then working my way all the way up through my number one book of the year. So let's get started with number 23. Okay, so coming in at number three, we have The Final Offer by Lauren Asher. I really loved this series. This was the Dreamland Billionaire series, and it was the first series that I read by Lauren Asher, and I read them pretty much back to back because I seriously was really enjoying them, and this is, I mean, this is a pretty thick book for a romance, I feel like, but I zoomed through it. So this one follows Cal Callahan and Alana, and it's a second chance force proximity, which I feel like those are just two tropes that need to be together. And this book was just, it was so good. It definitely had emotion too, because Cal's struggling with some addictions that he's previously had. And it's just, it was the perfect wrap up to such a good series. This was my favorite one of the series. Um, I kind of knew going into it, well I was hoping it would be because I loved Cal's character and this one did not disappoint. I really love this and I totally recommend this series if you're looking for like a spicy billionaire romance, this one's for you. Alright, coming in at number 22 we have Forgive or Forget Me by Anne Enerson. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I totally butchered these authors names by the way, I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, this book was such a surprise to me. She contacted me and sent me an arc for it. I got the physical arc, which this cover is so gorgeous. I seriously love it and I decided to read it and I loved it. So this has some um, second chance, found family, um, enemies to lovers. It definitely deals with a lot of loss too and kind of dealing with loss and grief and made me cry multiple times but I loved the romance in this and it was just a huge surprise and now I literally read every book that she writes because she writes emotion well, she writes spice well, she just writes romances so well. So if you're looking for an indie author to support I would definitely recommend Anne Enerson. I love her book. Coming in at number 21 we have Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. I know I talked about it in my last series, but Throne of Glass, oh my god, you guys, read this series. It is, oh. I could make like a whole two hour long video just talking about Throne of Glass because I love it so much. Like they are just, they're perfect in my eyes. So this one, um, going into it, I didn't know if it would be a five star because the first book of Throne of Glass, Throne of Glass, I rated a four star. Just because I didn't really know what to expect. I was just starting the series. Um, but you know how sometimes you rate a book high just because of like where you were in life when you were reading it or listening to it? That's this book for me. Um, me and my boyfriend, we were taking a vacation and we, we were listening to the audiobook and we were driving home to our vacation house and it was at night. It was thundering. It was raining. We were in a thunderstorm and we were listening to this like the end of it too, the last 100 pages, and if you've read Sarah J Mass, you know the last 100 pages are crazy and just like the vibes of the thunderstorm while listening to the end of this book, I remember being like this is literally perfect, like it is a core memory for me now because it was just 
perfect and the ending of this was crazy i just really i really loved this book and i think like the whole thunderstorm and atmosphere helped me rate it so high too but five stars and number 21 of the year coming in at number 20 i have imagine me by tara mafi i listened to this series about halfway through the year and it was such a quick series for me to get through even though it is a pretty big series and i just felt like this book wrapped everything up so perfect um i was crying i was laughing i just i really loved these characters um if you're not familiar with shatter me it is like a dystopian fantasy and if if you're new to the fantasy world i would definitely recommend picking up this series because the characters aren't too complex, um, the world isn't too crazy, like there's not a lot of characters, the world's pretty easy to understand, and I think it would be perfect for someone who wants to try out fantasy to see if they like it, but I really think this is a great series to start out if you want to get into fantasy dystopian but you don't know where to start. I would start with the Shatter Me series by Tara Mafi. so this was number 20 of the year. Alright, coming in at number 19, which was a total surprise for me because I was not expecting to like it as much as I did, was Playing Hard to Get by Monica Murphy. I didn't really know this series existed. I got a like PR package from Valentine PR. They sent me this first book and I was like, you know what, I'm in the mood for a sports romance. Let's do it. And oh my god, this book, I was literally giggling and like kicking my feet. I know people say that, but I literally was. Like, I loved this book. I, the tension, the spice, it was so good. Um, it's actually a three-part series, and I read all three books. I loved all three books, but this was, this one took the cake for me. The other two did not live up to this one. Um, she's his tutor, and he is, like, the star football player, and I was dying. Like, I loved this book. It was so good. I loved the sports aspect and I read it just as football season was starting and I was super excited about that. So I just felt like it was the perfect time to read it. And if you're into sports romances, if you like the whole force proximity, opposites attract, um, he's super like loud and like a partier and stuff and she's super quiet and like kind of a nerd. So good. Read this book. That was number 19 of the year. Alright, coming in at number 18, we have Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. I loved this. I know this is kind of like a book where some people don't necessarily like it too much. They think it's slow, maybe a little boring. I loved it. I read this one fourth in the series, so after Air Fire, and I would 100% recommend everyone to read it in that order because by that time you read about, this is about one of the main characters and it's all like small little novellas, there's five in here, about her life before what you just read happened and I was just, I was so invested in the series at that time, I loved her so much and like to get the background on her life by the fourth book was just so good and I literally cried at the end of each novella, I was getting teared up, I I just, I loved these, and I know not everyone likes this one, but I seriously loved it. Sarah J Mass does it like no other, and this was number 18 of the year. Alright, number 17 of the year goes to From Blood and Ash from by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I really enjoyed this book, and I wasn't really expecting to like it as much as I did. I picked it from a TBR jar, so like, I blindly went into it. I didn't know really anything about the series. And it's a thick book. I've only read the first one so far, but I really want to read the rest of the series this year. So this book follows Poppy, who is, um, she's a maiden, so she can't be touched. She has to live in solitary, like, she has to live a very, like, pure and alone life, pretty much. And, um, she's waiting for her ascension, which, like, she has to be found worthy of the gods. Um, and along comes Hawk, who is her guard, and obviously the tension's building, and it is just, it's a crazy book. Not only for the romance, but for the plot twist at the end. I was literally sitting up in my bed like, what just happened? The ending was crazy of this book, and 
I really want to read the second one. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but I will this year. And if you like Sarah J Mass, I really think you will love this book because it completely shocked me and I just, I really enjoyed it. So this was number, what did I say? 17 of the year. For number 16 this year, we have The It Girl by Ruth Ware. This was also a huge surprise for me. I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did. I'm not like a huge thriller person. I'll read them. I usually enjoy them, but I don't like love them. Like they're, they're not books that usually stand out to me. This one did, and I don't know if it's because I read it like around Halloween. It was kind of like spooky vibes. I just loved the whole setting of this book. So this book pretty much goes from like past to present and it follows in the past it follows a group of close friends at Oxford and one of them actually end up getting murdered and she was kind of like the it girl around campus and um someone was charged with the murder and now a decade later he just died in prison so it kind of reopens the case people are talking about it again and our main character um a journalist ends up coming to her doorstep and is like I think that guy was innocent. I think there's more to this story that meets the eye and it's kind of about them going through this journey and the main character discovering what really happened the night that April was murdered and I just I loved it. I loved the whole college setting for a thriller. I've never really read a thriller that was like that and it just really stood out for me. I really enjoyed it and I did not guess the ending at all. I think it's a book that will keep you guessing until the very end. Like, I haven't talked to anyone that has guessed the ending for this one. So if you like pretty twisty thrillers that keep you drawn in, I would 100% recommend this one. Coming in at number 15 of the year, big surprise is Fourth Wing. I know probably everyone has read this book by now, so I'm not going to say too much about it, but I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I loved the whole dragons. I've never read a book that had like dragons as one of like the main focal points of the book and this one definitely did and I I really enjoyed it. I, I did read it after a lot of the hype was out about it. I was one of the last ones to read it I feel like. I feel like when books have a lot of hype around it, it's hard for me to get like too excited because I'm like scared that I won't like it I guess. I enjoyed this book, I enjoyed the dragons, um, the hype is definitely there for this book and yeah I'm super excited to see where the series goes. Iron Flame was a little slow for me um, but the ending was crazy so I'm super excited for the third book because I have no idea what's gonna happen and I'm super excited to read the next one so this was number 15. Number 14 for this year was From Paris in Love by Elodie Colliard. I really loved this book. This book follows Miles and Riley who are work colleagues and they both kind of have had feelings for each other but they're just too scared to voice them, to tell each other because they're colleagues, they don't want it to get awkward. But they're pretty much offered a two week vacation um, in Paris for business. Um, like a business wants them to fly them out and for them to go, I'm pretty sure to like a wine festival. and. They're in the city, forced proximity, two weeks, so good. I loved her writing. Her writing was so cute, so easy to read, but also like the emotion, the spice. I, I loved everything about this book. So if you're looking for a new indie author to read, I would 100% recommend Elodie Colliard. So good, so good. Number 13 this year was Air Fire by Sarah J Mass so good. Literally no words for this series. No words, just read the series. If you're gonna listen to anything I say, Thread of Glass, read it. You will not regret it. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because obviously I don't want to spoil, but we meet a new character in this book. I love him. I just, I loved the whole vibes of this book and it was perfect. I bawled my eyes out. Number 13. Coming in at number 12 this year was How to Honeymoon Alone by Olivia Haley. This book was such a big surprise for me. I got sent the PR box for this book and it was my first PR box I've ever received. So 
This holds a really special place in my heart, but I can clearly remember picking up this book on the 4th of July. My siblings both had some friends over swimming and I was kind of sitting outside watching them and I decided to start reading this and I loved it. Like the scenes that she builds in this book, I could picture so clearly. I literally felt like I was on a tropical vacation somewhere. Um, this book follows Eden who was dumped before her wedding by her cheating ex and she has to go on the honeymoon alone because it's non-refundable and she meets Philippe while she's there and it was so good. He kind of like has her go on different adventures with him, they do different activities and I just, I loved them. He's super grumpy but so good. Read this book, another amazing indie author, I will read anything she writes. I love Olivia Haley and I love this book. For number 11, we have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I know not everyone likes Colleen Hoover's books, but this book for one holds a really special place in my heart because it was the first book that I physically read in years. I last or two years ago, I read everything just on audiobooks while I work and i was laying in bed and i was like you know what let's try physically reading a book this was the first one i picked up and i loved it there was a couple things i would have changed maybe a couple things she said i would have <laughs> not particularly put in a book but i i just i loved this story i know it's not everyone's favorite but i feel like with the trauma that was going on um miles is a pilot and he had some trauma in his past and um what was her name tate kind of meets him brother's best friend i love that trope i loved this book i know it's not everyone's favorite but i seriously i loved this book i bawled my eyes out at the end so all right we are now in the top 10 so number 10 of the year was better than the movies by lynn painter read this book oh my gosh young adult so cute. I was smiling. I was laughing. I actually don't think I cried, which is a big surprise there, but I I loved everything about this book. Wes, so cute. Literally one of my favorite book boyfriends. He's so funny. I loved their banter. Like there's a couple scenes in this book that I will always remember. I feel like I want to reread it and annotate it this year because I just loved Wes and Liz so cute and i think there's a second one coming out which i cannot wait for because i just i love lynn painter's writing if you're looking for a book that will cheer you up and make you smile and laugh lynn painter her books are so cute and they never fail to make me laugh and smile and i just i loved this book i don't want to say too much because go in blind because it is just it's so cute and i loved it so that was number 10 of the year all right, coming in at number nine this year, which was a huge pleasant surprise for me, was The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I seriously enjoyed this book so much. It had all the emotions in it. I laughed, I cried. I don't think there's any book out that's quite like this, which is what made it so special to me. So this book follows Florence Day, who is a ghostwriter, and um, she gets she ends up getting a new editor who won't extend her deadline. And she kind of thinks this is it you know my career's over and then she gets a call home that she has to return home because her father has passed away and her family owns a funeral parlor so she returns home and kind of like the crazy thing about this book which i don't think any other book has in it is she can see spirits so you know she returns home they're planning the funeral she's thinking that she's probably going to be out of a job and then she gets a knock at her door and it is a ghost of the editor that she just met so that's that's no spoils everything's on the back of the book that i just said but it's it's a really good book and i cried multiple times i loved it i wasn't expecting it to like it as much as i did but the Dead Romantics, number nine of the year. Number eight this year was Say You Swear by Megan Brady. Oh my God, this book, you guys, sobbing. I was sobbing. Noah Riley, he is perfect. Literally the most perfect book boyfriend in 
a romance book that I have read. This story though, the emotion in it, be prepared to have a tissue box if you read it. Um, college best friends, it's a best friend group, they're football players, and a lot of drama happens. I don't want to spoil anything, go in pretty blind to it, that's what I did, and I was shocked. And also bawling. So this was number eight of the year, definitely recommend one of my favorite romances of the year. And even though it's thick, I think it's 100% worth it because the ending was just amazing. And Noah Riley, meet your next book boyfriend right here, Noah Riley. Number eight. Number seven this year was A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. I, I loved this series. Akatar, everyone I feel like has read it by now, but this was um, my second favorite of the series. I, I loved I loved it. I loved it. The ending was crazy. It had me crying. It had me sitting up in my bed thinking what the heck is gonna happen next. These characters, the found family in this series. This is another series where if you want to dive into fantasy but you don't know where to start, I would 100% recommend this series. The world building isn't too crazy. The map is really easy to follow too and not too too many characters they're introduced pretty slowly so i feel like it's pretty easy to grasp onto it but this series and these characters will always have such a special place in my heart because it was just an amazing story this this story this is the third book of the series and this is definitely more of like the war but i was blown away there are so many plot twists in this book and the ending had me literally screaming and crying so if that doesn't make you want to read it, I don't know what will because this series is so good. Anything Sarah J Mass writes is amazing. So this was number seven of the year. All right, number six and number five this year. I, I couldn't decide which one I like more. So they're just a joint number. So for number six and number five this year was Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Mass. Perfection, perfection in books. I tandem read them, <laughs> I tandem read them, and I would 100% recommend doing it that way if you're going to read these books because I feel like if I didn't tandem read them, I would not have liked Tower of Dawn as much as I did. Um, pretty much why people tandem read these is they're both happening at the same time, and um, if you kind of jump back and forth between chapters of the two, you're reading them at the same time, just different characters. They both follow different characters, but if you read all of Empire of Storms, which ends on a huge cliffhanger, and then you knew you had to get through all 600 whatever pages of this book, you would not enjoy it as much. At least that's how I feel. I would be like, oh my god, what is going to happen? So I would 100% recommend tandem reading these two. I did and I seriously, I loved both of them so much. Tower of Dawn was a huge surprise for me because I've heard it's not everyone's favorite, but for me, it was perfection. It was so good. I was sobbing again with both of these. I did a lot of crying this year over books, um, but so good. These are my babies. Um, I, I loved them. I loved this storyline which I wasn't expecting to because I thought it was gonna be boring. It was so good. And this storyline was crazy. So it's cool to kind of tandem read them because this one's a little bit slower. This is crazy. So please, if you're gonna read the series, tandem read. Please, if you're gonna listen to me, listen to me on that. Tandem read these two. This was six and five of the year. All right, the final four now. Um, coming in at number four this year was Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Oh my God, this book so good so good archer again top book boyfriend honestly i was gonna tell you what this book is about but if you don't know i think you should just go in completely blind because it is it is such a good book you will cry i cried multiple times but also i was not expecting it to be as spicy as it was i was like <laughs> it was really good it was good there was spice in it but the spice was so well done and the storyline was just amazing, emotional, a perfect book. Please read this book if you have not already. That was my fourth book of the year. All right, top three. Number three this year was Anxious People by Frederick Backman. Again, this is a life-changing book, I think. 
I think everyone should read this book at some point in their life. I finished it and I literally was staring at my ceiling crying a lot, like sobbing. My mom thought something like terrible happened because it wasn't even a sad cry. It was just a more of like, I just read such a beautiful book that I'm never going to forget. And I think everyone should read this book, especially if you're someone who struggles with mental health and anxiety. Um, I would, I would totally recommend it. It was such a beautiful book. I listened to it on audio. Um, I would totally recommend the audiobook. The audiobook was great and it's just, I feel like a story unlike no other. Um, basically it's about these people who went in for a, um, like an apartment open house and a bank robber comes in and holds them all hostage and they slowly start kind of sharing their life stories and realizing that maybe they're connected in more ways than they think and it was just it's a beautiful story about life that's that's all i can say about it and if you want to pick up a book that you feel like will seriously change your life anxious people it was it was beautiful all right number two this year was a court of silver flames this book holy cow i don't care i don't care what people say about nesta she's my girl she was my girl from the first book I know, I know, not everyone loves her. I loved her. I loved everything about her. I loved the growth in this book. Cause I know she was kind of <laughs> at the beginning of the series, but by this book, she was perfect. And the growth, the romance, everything. Everything in this book was perfect. I, again, I bawled my eyes out. Are we surprised by now? No, probably not, but I did. Um, I cannot wait for the next book. I hope it's about Azriel. I think everyone does, honestly, by now. But um, yeah, Nesta, she is amazing. Cassian, he's my favorite bad boy. I don't care what anyone says. I love both of them. Obviously, I can't say too much about it because it's the fifth book of the series and I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't. Nesta and Cassian will always be my babies. So that is one couple I will not take any negative opinions on because I just, I love them. I love them so much. I love this book. Read the series if you haven't. I know I'm telling you guys to read a lot of books, but seriously, this is such an amazing book. All right, my number one book of 2023 was Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. This book completely changed my life. I don't care if that's dramatic. That's how I feel about it. This series, this book, this was my favorite one so far. I have not finished Kingdom of Ash yet, but everything about this book was just perfect to me. Sarah's writing in this series, I feel like, is just so poetic, so emotional. Like, literally one sentence can make me cry, even if it's not, like, a sad line. Just, like, how she writes stuff and, like, the little words she puts in there. I was, like, tearing up probably 30 times while reading this book. But it was just, I loved, I loved the friendships that start to develop in this book and the plot twist and the storyline and everything was just so amazing and it all comes together at the end. It was just, it's a beautiful story. So if you guys are going to listen, I know I told you guys to read a lot of books today, but if you're going to read any book, please read Throne of Glass. I'm planning to do a full reread in February. I have a group on Instagram. If anyone wants to join, comment, let me know. I will totally add you to it if you have an Instagram. And I'm thinking about making a video vlog of it too, reading the series and just telling you guys what I think about it because I have so many thoughts about the series. And the ending, oh, there's so much stuff I want to say, but obviously I don't want to spoil it. But such an amazing book. I'm so glad I read the series because it's seriously amazing series, life-changing, Queen of Shadows, number one book of the year. Alright, that is it. That is my top 23 books of 2023. I had honestly an amazing reading year. I loved so many books. I found so many new amazing authors that I cannot wait to read anything else that they write. 
And yeah, I am so excited to start 2024 and find some new favorite books. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you liked it, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting weekly on Wednesdays. So yeah, thank you guys so so much for all your love and support you have shown me. I love you guys all so so much and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye!